Let's discuss question number four for language paper one. Now, this question you always tend to get a statement where you have a student having read this said, blah, 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 or a reviewer having seen this said, blah, blah, blah. Often you get a statement and you're asked to look at the second half of the extract to the end and you are asked to discuss to what extent you agree with the statement. Now the statement that you get presented doesn't tend to contradict what goes on inside the actual extract therefore my suggestion would be to agree with what the statement says and then find language and structural uh, techniques so find examples of language and structure which then reinforce and support your response. Now remember with the statement you want to focus on keywords within the statement that you given and then you illustrate that you agree I will suggest also writing a minimum of at least four peel paragraphs point evidence explanation link four of these where you've got a mix of either language and structural techniques that are included within your peel paragraphs where you're illustrating that you agree with the statement now I'm going to use the example of the 2020 Rosie and stranger child paper for this question where the student statement especially the second half of the student statement is really where the keywords can be found okay so the student statement says the writer has left us in no doubt that she is part of Rosie's imagination of course what I'm going over is how to craft literally the perfect grade 9 response and the perfect grade 9 paragraph for question number four however do take this as lessons and apply it to other question four practice papers okay so this is for language paper one so let's have a look at how to break down the approach for question number four so going back to the statement the writers left us a no doubt keyword that she is part of Rose's imagination of course this is to do with the disappearance of the stranger child so the first half of the statement illustrates the student statement saying that the disappearance of the stranger child is not surprising because the writer has left us in no doubt that she's part of Rosie's imagination. I would argue that the, uh, the keywords are no doubt and the fact that we agree that this stranger child is part of Rosie's imagination. So I'm going to walk you through a grade nine paragraph and you want to try and aim to write at least four of these paragraphs within your answer for question number four in language paper one. So let's start with the opening point, okay? So this is the P in your peel paragraph. We're relating, of course, back to the keywords in the question and you're illustrating to your teacher and your examiner that you understand the assignment, you understand what you need to focus in on. So the opening peel point could be, firstly, and of course, if you then do your subsequent points, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, in this case, it's firstly, we have no doubt, keyword, that the child is a figment of Rosie's imagination, second keywords, as the children take little notice of her. So that's my first, the first part of my opening point, okay? However, I'm gonna go into my second part, I'm not done yet. The children are often elated, or rather children are often elated, which means happy, to see other children where they're playing. So their passivity reveals the stranger child does not exist. So I'm basically saying that because in the extract, Kara and her brothers, so this is Rosie's children, uh, carry on playing with, um, as if the stranger child is not there. My argument is that I agree with the student statement that you know this child is definitely part of Rosie's imagination, okay? So I've started off by saying, reinforcing the keywords in the question but then my second sentence in my opening point so I'd suggest always have two sentences in your opening point you first re-establish your um you know whatever you're talking about with the keywords and then reinforce that okay and that's exactly what I've done and I've also made sure I'm using ambitious language instead of saying that, ch that children are often happy to see other kids and that's why they take notice of the, they would have taken notice of her I'm saying children are often elated, they're really happy. And also passivity, this word, what passivity means is, um, you know, when you're passive, you don't notice, you take no notice of anybody, okay? So of course, this again is ambitious language that I'm using. So that's my opening point. I've used two sentences to reinforce that I agree with the student statement and I've also made sure to include keywords from the question. Now, this is the second part in my peel paragraph, the evidence. We learned that evidence, Kara seemed unfazed, dot, dot, dot. I'm, use, I'm adding ellipses here to show that I want to relate to the whole sentence, but I don't have time to be writing the entire complex sentence out, okay? So this is my evidence. We learned that Kara seemed unfazed, dot, dot, dot. Now, this is my explanation where I'm gonna talk about technique, but equally in my explanation, I'm gonna unpack it and relate it back to why are we left to no doubt that this stranger child is part of Rosie's imagination? So 
This is my explanation. The writer uses this complex sentence of included structure to hint to us that this stranger child does not exist as Rosie's children are unperturbed by its presence. Unperturbed means um, not disturbed by its presence. However, I don't stop there. I then develop this, okay? So I've used a structural technique. Now I'll develop it. Moreover, the adjective unfazed, now I'm doing some word level analysis in addition to my structures of this language. The adjective unfazed emphasizes this child is a hallucination as Kara takes no notice of her. So within your explanation in your peel paragraph for language paper one, you want to always make sure you add language or structure or you can do both if you can but equally you now need to unpack and say okay how does this relate back to the student statement what does this illustrate and this is also part of your interpretation so of course um, my interpretation is that if Rosie's seeing her kids playing and they don't take any notice of other kids well that stranger child can't be there because usually kids would take notice if there's another kid there they'd maybe want to play with them or maybe ask them you know what they're doing in the garden okay so that's what I've added as part of my explanation however I then now need to add the fourth part of my pill paragraph which is my link back to the question and this is my link consequently it is evident that the stranger child is an apparition so this is like a ghostly figure hallucination whatever from Rosie's imagination keywords from the question as her children do not detect her presence okay so obviously I'm linking it back to the question and I'm showing that I agree with the student statement. I'm using keywords like consequently, you can also use words like hence, thus, and so on. So when it comes to question number four, what you want to do is I would suggest when writing grade nine responses, adopt the peel paragraph structure, point evidence explanation link. However, the bulk of your marks is in the second E in your peel paragraph. This is where you explain and unpack either the writer's use of language or the writer's use of structure. You wanna mix this up and have a nice balance of language and structural techniques in your question number four response before you link it back to the question and try when it comes to these style of paragraphs try to write a minimum of three or ideally four peel points for question number four this is the 20 marker